What is up everybody? Uh, this is my prototype video. Yeah, that's better. Uh, so my plan was to make a smoke alarm muffler. I'm a lousy cook. I'm always setting it off like every week. I'm pretty short. Ceilings are pretty tall. I usually have to climb on a chair and kind of smash it and smash it and my kids are crying and my dogs are freaking out. So um, I wanted a solution that was able to be activated remotely. I didn't want like strings or poles or any of that kind of stuff. Um, I wanted something that was low profile, not taking up a lot of space and wasn't too ugly. I really wanted something, you know, mechanical and amazing like Mark makes, but... I don't have those chops. Uh, what I did come up with was, oh, and that's the other thing. So my smoke alarm, the best solution actually is to just put a piece of painter's tape over the um, speaker holes. It's great, you can still hear it, but it's not ear piercing. It's perfect, that's the best solution, just two pieces of tape. Um, but my house is set up so that they're all interconnected. So when the smoke gets in here, it's going to trip all the alarms in the house. So I needed a solution that was going to actually block the smoke as opposed to just muffling the sound. So what I came up with was, you know, Mark had mentioned something called a solenoid. I researched that and that's basically coiled copper wire and then a pin. And when you turn on the current, the pin, the pin, you know, shoots through. Right, um, and so my plan was to connect the solenoid to basically a box and then connect the pin to the box. And then when you turned on the remote, it would shoot up and basically, you know, here's the, the smoke alarm and it go boop. And then when you were done cooking, you could push it again and boop and it would just hang there. Um, that failed. What I learned is that solenoids run super hot. The battery gets super hot. Um, I actually exploded a battery. That wasn't fun. And it was pretty weak comparatively. So that idea was out. So I went with another idea, which was a box basically. So like this would be the ceiling and there's the smoke alarm. So I really like that. Over the top was this um, silicone mat and a little piece of PVC. And then you roll it up and there'd be like a little pin or something right there that you could push. And when you push it, it would go like this. And then that would cover the box and keep the smoke from getting in there. I figured you could put some gears there, but that was going to have to be real precise or 3D printed or something like that. And you, know, you see that it's just not, it's not consistent enough. So. I was afraid it, it was going to just fall down, obviously, right? So gravity, there's lots of things to work out. And I couldn't have holes in the side of the box because the smoke would get in. So that was out too. So I was running out of options. Um, I want to thank one of my peers, Rob Dudgeon, for coming up with this idea. I had actually had it first, technically, but he came up with it too. And uh, I decided to go with it. So basically, you know, what does everyone do when the smoke alarm goes off? They wave their hands and they wave a towel or open and close the door very quick. I just wanted to streamline that process. So here's the smoke alarm and here is my solution. Right, so just a little fan. It would go right here. I ran some tests, it works totally. I actually used a steam cleaner to see how this would take care of the smoke. And yeah, it works. So. It's not very mechanical, it's pretty electrical, um, but this is a cheap setup. I'm certain it's gonna work. It's streamlined, it's remote, it's safe because it still will allow the smoke to get in there when it's not on. And yeah, we make do with what we got, right? So I wanna thank Mark, obviously, and everyone else who helped and commented on my ideas. And yeah, I really hope I don't burn my house down. Thanks everybody, see ya.